Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the developer advocate lead here at Xano. And in this tutorial, we're covering how to connect Xano to Flutterflow with the specific topic of pagination or paging. So what exactly is pagination and when do we want to use it? So pagination is what we can implement on list of data in order to segment them off into, let's say, more digestible uh, pieces of information at a time, right? So let's say, for example, you have a large, large list with thousands of records, right? And, try and instead of trying to send all that data through an API to your front end at one time, which will inevitably overwhelm your front end and slow it down by trying to load all that data, we can actually implement paging uh, to send more digestible sections of that data at a certain time. And then we can actually go, you know, page by page, calling the next page uh, with this thing called pagination. It can also improve user experience, right? Instead of the user looking at a super large list of data, you can send them smaller pieces of information at a time or top results, and they can go page by page as needed. So we'll set up two different types of pagination today. One will be infinite scroll, which is very friendly to set up with in Flutterflow. And then I'll show a more traditional uh, or old school kind of paging flow, which has a button for next page and a page for back page to kind of scroll through your list that way. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's go ahead and start in Xano. So on my screen here, I have an API endpoint. Pretty simple, we're just querying all records from this table of MLB players. And you can see if I actually go and run this, well, we'll get a result here. And if I collapse this, we can see there's some 1,000 plus uh, MLB players in this list. So this is a really good candidate to implement paging, right? We probably don't wanna try and display all 1,000 players on a single page at a time. So let's go ahead and implement paging. So the first thing we'll do here in Query All Records, if we go to this output tab, and we go to return, I can check to enable paging. And you know we can choose what page the response is on, how many per page, if we wanna include this paging metadata, which tells us things like the next page, current page, offset, et cetera, et cetera. We can actually in include the total item count, but let's go ahead and save this. You'll see the response will change here. We get things like this metadata with items received, as I said, current page, et cetera. And then our results are actually nested in this items array here. So let me save this and show you what that looks like. And if I go ahead and run this, that's our result, right? But here's the thing, right now this API response is always gonna be on page one. So what we can do is we can actually do external override in Xano, which allows us to control what page we're calling from our front end. So first I'm gonna add a parameter here or an input. I'll just make it an integer. I'm gonna name it page. And if we go back into query all records, and go to this external section, I hit this drop down. You can see I can map up this page. So what this drop down does is it allows us to override certain aspects of our query, such as paging, we could even mimic the per page or the offset, things like searching and sorting that we might want to have our front end control for this response. So that's super handy. Um, one other thing I'm gonna do in the output here, I'm just gonna add a, a sort here for the player ID. And that's just cause I'm familiar with this data set and that'll help me visualize that we're on the right page uh, when we're going through page by page. So I'm gonna save this and let me go ahead, I'm gonna publish these changes real quick. But now you can see if I run this and this um, oh, external paging is great, I don't have to actually put in page one to get to page one, but you can see if I run it here, well, we get our, our first 20 results and they're now sorted by ID, but page one here, we should see the same exact thing and you can see what current page you're on um, I could go to page five here and run this. And now you can see our current page is five. We see our next page six, previous page four, and so on and so forth. So we can actually see here how our results change page by page. Great. So now we're ready to actually jump into Flutterflow and let's actually connect this API endpoint and start to set up those two different methods of paging. So I'm gonna copy this endpoint URL and come over to my blank Flutterflow app and let's go to this API call section and I'm gonna create a new API call and this will be called, we'll just call it players. I'll drop in that endpoint URL I copied and in my query parameters, we wanna add that page query parameter. This is gonna be from variable. We need to create a new one, we'll call it page. And over here in, in um, the variable section, 
we'll just set that to an integer and let's go to response and test and so i'll go ahead here and just put in page one and let's simply oh we actually i hit add call but let's test the api call first because there's going to be some things in that json path that we need so if we go over here to recommended well we actually are going to want here uh this current page um or actually this next page really is going to be super important but let's go ahead and check both those things if you care if you're going to care about other items in the metadata feel free to go ahead and select them i'm also going to select this items array maybe name team and position let's say that's all uh the information i don't really care about the height weight uh, or age for or the id for this example here so we'll display name, team, and position. Um, and then I'll also want that metadata, especially of this next page. And you'll see that'll really help us with the infinite scroll in Flutterflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and now save this call. Oh, one more thing, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thanks for that little note, Flutterflow. I need to actually name these items here. So I'll say current page here, next page, this is my items. And then we have name, team, and position. Great, okay, so that looks great. I'm gonna save that. And now let's jump over to our UI builder. And so I'm gonna get rid of this default column here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my list view in. And let's start with a card here. And then I'll drag in some text. And then maybe some more text and we will wrap that in the column and I'll do even more text here. So we'll have that name, position and team come through. And now that I have basically the UI that I'm gonna um, have here, let's go ahead and start to set up our uh, backend query so we can start with that infinite scroll. And like I said, it's very friendly to uh, set that up here in Flutterflow, which is great. They make it super easy. I've seen some other front ends where infinite scroll can be a pain, but um, this is, uh, great because it's got a kind of built-in engine here. So select it on my list view. Let's go to my backend query. And I'm going to do an API call and that will just be to players. And here they have this check here for enable infinite scroll. So we can go ahead and actually select that. And now for my variables here, if I just select page, and now if I go to what that value is, I can actually select my next page index here. Uh, which is super handy. So Flutterflow, once you enable that infinite scroll, they'll create some of these variables for you here. So I can actually do pagination, next page number, and hit confirm. And now over here, we want to actually generate uh, our children here. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. We'll call this players. The value here is gonna be from our players response. And we're gonna go ahead and select items here because nested in that items array remembers our name, uh, position, and team. So if I hit confirm here, and then confirm again to generate those parent items, those child items, and I come over, now I can map up my different text fields here. So we'll go ahead and start with the name. So player item, I'll choose my JSON path. And here I can say dot name and that's capital there because that's the actual response I'm getting from that API. And we'll go to the next one. And this is player item again. We'll say JSON path, and this is gonna be underscore position because that's how it comes back in the API response. And then finally, we'll do that with team. So underscore team, confirm. Awesome, so I might just give this page title something like MLB players right here. And we're ready to actually test this out already. So this will be infinite scroll. So you'll first see loaded the first 20. And as I scroll down, we should automatically get page after page to see our entire list of MLB players. So top right here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a test mode right here. And this will take a couple moments to compile. And, but once it does, we'll uh, demo off that infinite scroll. Okay, so now that my Flutterflow front-end test mode has compiled here, you can see here's my initial list. And as I scroll down, we should just keep seeing more and more players as we go, which is really cool. So uh, this infinite scroll 
super handy if that's the experience that you want to give your users. And as you can see, we can go through our entire list as we just scroll and scroll, we're automatically calling the next page and populating a very large list of players here. So you can see I can scroll all the way back up. You can see that's far more than uh, probably a couple pages there. So that's infinite scroll. Uh, I'm going to also demo another option you can do with paging, which would be more of, I guess, a traditional where you have your initial uh, 20 items and then you might have like a next button or a back button to go back and forth. So let's see how to also set that up uh, back in Flutterflow. So back into my UI builder here, let's go ahead and grab a button element. I'm gonna put that here in my top app bar and we'll just call this one right here. We'll call it next. And then we might also want a back button. Grab my button here put it over here and I don't know if I can quite expand that or not but that will essentially be our back button if you're familiar with Flutterflow, you could probably make this look a lot prettier uh, than I can but I just want to get to show you the functionality working here interacting between the front end and back end so next what I want to do is on my list view here uh, let's go to my back end query and actually before I do that I want to grab my whole home page and when I do that I have access to a local page state variable and what I can do here is create a page state I'll, I'll call it page and we'll set this as an integer and our initial value here will really just be one and that is of course optional uh, but we're gonna start on page one of our results right so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, hit confirm there but going back to now my backend query of our list view, let's go ahead and edit this because we want to take off infinite scroll for this example, right? Because we're going to use uh, those buttons to go page by page. So here for my page parameter, what I need to do, let me go ahead and remove that, that next page variable that's only populated when you enable that infinite scroll. Um, so here I'm going to select the page state and it's going to be page here that we just set up and I'm gonna go ahead and hit confirm. Great, so next what we can do is if we go to my next button and I go to the action flow editor and let's open this up. So on tap, let's add a condition here and let's just go to state management and update page state and we're gonna uh, update our page um, variable here. And we have this nice option of increment or decrement so we can go up one page or down or as many as we want really so we'll just do one right because that's going to make sense um, but this will automatically uh, bump up that query parameter page for us and then you can see the update type it rebuilds the current page so it's automatically going to redo that back end query to our Xano API call um, and make things really easy for us so it's a very simple action there I'm going to go ahead and close that and let's do that for the back button too and where am I going? To my action flow editor. So let me open this up. So once again, on tap, let's add an action here. And state management, update page state. We'll update page variable. And we'll go uh, down by one this time. And let me see if minus one is going to work there. Let's go ahead and close that. Great. So now we should already be uh, ready to roll here. So let's go ahead back to our test mode and do an instant reload. And so with my test mode all loaded up, you can see here is my list. And as I scroll down, right, we only get our first 20 results, right? So our first page, we don't have infinite scroll on, but I have these buttons now. I can go next through the page. So I get my next second page of results as I go. And we see our results change with our next 20 players. And our back button should also work. We should also be able to go all the way back. So there you have it. Couple different ways of doing pagination on list between Xano and Flutterflow. Xano makes it super easy with the external override. Um, Flutterflow has the built-in infinite scroll, which is obviously one method, but as you can see, you can do the more traditional method with uh, that next button for next page and a back button for page. So two different ways to do it should fulfill all of your pagination and paging needs. So thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was insightful and helps you uh, with 
your Xano Flutterflow application.